that's why you can't waste your time. Don't waste your time. You don't know how long you have. You don't know. But while you're here, let me put it this way for you. You have come from God to live for God, to go back to God. So you were sent here by God for his purpose. Listen, most of you, the enemy already knows he's lost you to salvation. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. For the most part, most vast majority of this room, Satan already knows he's lost as far as your salvation. You're a daughter and a son of God. What he's after now is your purpose. He knows that, you know, you're saved, you're, you're going to go to heaven, but it's, it, there, there's something else besides just getting saved and going to heaven when you die. If that's all there was to salvation, hey, that's a glorious thing. I'm not belittling that. But if that's all there was to knowing God, it'd be better just to get saved and die. Because heaven's a lot better than here. And your father wants to be with you. No, you're here because he needs you here. And the enemy will do anything to try to steal your purpose. One of the things he will try to do is to distract you. To keep you in bondage so that you'll live in condemnation. That's why even last night and this morning, the Lord's been dealing with some of those issues in your heart. Even just like those addictions, that junk in your mind. You know, we know one of the reasons that pornography and that kind of, that filth, that kind of garbage is just, you know, one, one reason God hates it so bad is because also of what it does to you. It robs you of who he's called you to be. It keeps you in condemnation and shame. That keeps you always going, I can't do anything for God. I can't do anything for God. See, he's a thief. That thing is a thief. But God has come this weekend to bring you here to set you free from its power. That you can live in victory over it. But there's one more thing that I want to speak to you really quick. That I feel like I heard the Lord say. And I don't even have all these thoughts together. This is just something I've just heard in my spirit. One of the ways that the enemy will try to rob your purpose is through wrong relationships. Wrong relationships. And one of the ways to know, some of you, th th if a relationship that you are in right now is, is good or bad, is to think of it like this. There's, a, there's a many references in the word that we are the trees of righteousness, right? So I want you to think about this relationship. Just think sort of as a tree. Think of that relationship as a tree. Now this is, I read this verse this morning, and I felt like this was your verse today for somebody in this room or somebody. A good tree can't produce bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Now watch, kids. How do you know the relationship you are in is not right? How do you know it? Here, right here. A tree is identified by its fruit. What is this relationship you are in right now producing? What kind of fruit is on the tree? What is it? Is it producing fruit that is the will of God for your life? Is it producing fruit that is just causing you to be pushed toward the purposes of God and righteousness and walking in the perfection of His will? Is that the fruit that it's producing? Then keep it and fertilize it and do everything you can to make it grow and prosper. If that relationship is producing the fruits of the Spirit, ever who you're, you're walking with in relationship, they're just encouraging you in prayer. They are walking with you and, and just encouraging you in your commitment and in your consecration. Or are they encouraging you in compromise? Is that relationship that you're in producing works of the flesh that appease the flesh and keep you in shame? You say, well, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Well, he tells us. He's got that covered. Look at this. Jesus was so amazing. You know what he did about things like this? He talked to trees. Hmm. Hmm. Then Jesus said to the tree, he went to a tree that was supposed to be producing fruit and it wasn't. That was not okay with him. It wasn't just producing bad fruit. It was fruit. It was producing no fruit. So Jesus said to the tree, he said to the tree, may no one ever eat your fruit again. 
And so the next morning, when they passed by the fig tree that he had cursed, the disciples noticed it had withered from the roots up the next day. Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree. He spoke to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, Look, Rabbi, the fig tree that you cursed has withered and died. And Jesus said, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Come on, if you look at this tree of this relationship in your life, you look at it, it's not producing any fruit of righteousness. You know what you do? First of all, you speak right now to this tree. You're fixing to do that and declare in the name of Jesus, this thing's going to die. One more thing you've got to do. Just one more. Here's the word of the Lord about that tree. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. Jesus said, when a tree is not producing good fruit, you don't be nice to it. You be violent with it. Come on. You declare in the name of Jesus, you speak to that tree and you let it know you're going to die. You're not producing God's will for my life. This relationship's not producing God's will for my life. I'm just letting you know ahead of time, you're going to die. And so what do you do next? You take the axe of God's judgment. What is that? The word of God. And with the word of God, you show it no mercy. Come on, you don't go over there and negotiate with the tree. And say, you know, if I could just eat a little fruit every once in a while. No, nope. you let it know no one is ever going to eat the fruit of you again. And with that word of God, you take that axe and you sever that tree from its very root. And you cut it down. You cut it down. See, it's violent. I know there are certain things that God is just violent about. You know what? Sin's one of them. God is violent when it comes to sin. Oh, yes, he is. He told the children of Israel when they were dealing with the, all the ites in the promised land and they were going to have to go in there and, and destroy all these enemies, enemy armies and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and all these ites and they were going to have to destroy these enemies in order to possess their promise. You know what God said to the children of Israel before they walked in? He said, when you get over there and you face those enemies, He said, don't you make any covenant with them. He said, you show them no mercy. You don't, you don't negotiate with the devil. You don't negotiate with a liar. You show him no mercy. You don't negotiate with your flesh. Well, everybody else in my youth group watches porn, not you. Come on, all the other girls in my school have already given up their virginity. All the other girls think it's fine just to kind of make out with the guy. Not you, woman of God. No, no, no. Come on. You say, but he says he's a Christian. He just likes to make out. Show him no mercy. You show him no mercy. Come on. You rip his hand off. Jesus said, cut it off. If you need to cut it off. You show it no mercy. Come on. You let him know I'm a woman of God. Don't even think about touching me. Come on, boys. You're called for more. Come on, you're called for more than low living. Young man, you're called for more than the filth of this flesh. You're called to be a man of God. Get up on your feet right now all over this room. You're called for righteousness. You're called to a higher standard. You're called to holiness. You're called to know God. You're called to see God. You're called to hear God. Come on, raise your hands all over this room right now. No, 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 
a desire is stirred up in you. Come on, a fire is stirred up in your heart that says, come what may, I will obey you, God. Lord Jesus, my answer to you is yes today. I hear the call. I hear the awakening to know you and to walk in the fullness of my purpose. I hear the call of God. Oh, God, my purpose, my destiny is being awakened in me, God. I'm through with compromise. I'm through with wasting my time. I'm through, Lord Jesus, with this tree, this relationship in my life that's causing me to live less than what you've called me to live. And Lord, it's hard, and you know it's hard. But Lord, if you're saying cut it down, then the tree's coming down. You say, well, I don't want to hurt them. Pray God will send somebody else to heal them. That's not your job. You say, well, you know, I'm trying to be a witness to them. It's not working right now. Let somebody else be a witness to them. You go get with God. You're going to have to cut them off. You're going to have to cut them off. Some of you are going to have to text somebody this afternoon and say, the tree's dying. The tree's dying. Just needed to let you know, the tree's dying. Oh, Jesus. You say, this is really hard. Now, I'll tell you what, what helps with the hard part. If you just look at yourself, it, it just about feels impossible. I'll tell you what will help. Look up at him. See his face. When you see him, the one who gave it all, laid it all down for you. When you see him, I'll tell you what about that. You can trust those eyes. They'll never take advantage of you. Oh, when you look in those eyes, you're looking into eyes that will never lie to you. He's not telling you to cut it off because he's just trying to be mean and wants you to hurt. He's telling you to cut it off because it's destroying in your life and your purpose. I want you to step back. say y'all give a lot of altar calls I know don't we and because the reason is because this is a house that goes from glory to glory it's why it's called the ramp and you know what glory to glory is yes to yes and every altar call we do in this house is another yes and we'll give a lot of altar calls till Jesus comes most of the time we answer them too because we live from yes to yes when he asked for something else, yes, that we build an altar there. There's some young men and women in this room today. I don't care who you are, how old you are. You may be 60 years old. You may be 16. But the, the Lord is dealing with you today about that call to your purpose. And there are some things in your life you're going to have to cut down and let him cut out and be willing to say yes to that. You know who you are. And even if the girlfriend is in here or even if the boyfriend is in here, just be willing to say, God, I see your eyes. I'm coming after you. Come on. 